Welcome to Speed Scene Live TV, the only show dedicated to the sportsman racer. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, Hedman Hustler Headers, m &H Tires, and TheFolk.com. With your hosts, Diana Might, Bruce Barker, Scott Lucky Hudson, Alex Rogio, Bob Beck, Bryant Layton, with Donnie Couch and Dar Hawthorne. And here we go, as Diana Might would say, oh yes, it's another Tuesday night. I just don't have the flair, though. It doesn't work right. I would be He's that Bruce Barker guy to say, flair? Yeah. I have a flair pen in my collection of pens. Yeah, you got a flair down in the truck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What are you a road flare. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, I'm Bruce Barker. There's Alex, the car girl, Rosio. Hey Rogio. there. Oh, welcome to the show, Alex. Thank haven't you. seen you at all except for right now this year. Great but, to be back. Well, it is only our second episode, so that. I haven't seen her since last year. I know. Hey, I know. Hot Rod Bob's in the house. everybody. Man, we got to center that camera. Everybody. Look at that. Dar Hawthorne is oh, here, too. Dar everybody. I'm trying to figure out how we can squeeze even more people onto this show tonight. Well, we'll go out and get some homeless people. We'll get yeah. some remote. Uh, <laughs> Where's Donnie with the camera? We got cookies for him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we do have cookies. Shame on you. I'm ignoring those. Uh, They're oh, to my right, and I can't see I, them. Well, I, I tried to ignore them, but it was too late. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, thanks, Doc. Yeah, hey, so uh, I, I know we got a, a hundred million things going on the show tonight. What's, what's happening? What do we got going on? Well, I think first we're going to start with um, a video that um, we submitted for Champion Spark Plugs. I'm not sure if you yep. guys are familiar. That's Probably. right. Probably. Yeah, They're a big company. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they put on a contest. This is their third year now um, called Search for a Champion. And um, they allow people to send in two minute videos that um, show why they should be worthy of a $50,000 sponsorship. $50,000. Yeah. So here we're going to show right now, I think. Um, the two-minute video that I submitted for my racing. All right, let's take a look. Let's I'm Alex Roggio, and I want to be a champion. They call me Alex the Car Girl because cars are my whole life. My passion is drag racing. But I'm also senior editor of Mopar Max Magazine, co-host of Speed Scene Live TV, and co-founder of my own car care products company. People wonder at all that I do at only 23, but my motto is live at wide open throttle. I started racing when I was 20, and in my rookie year, I earned my first number one qualifier and won my first race. In only my second year of racing, I was runner-up in my PSCA class championship. My goal is to climb the ladder in drag racing until I get to the pros. I know how to win, but I also know that getting to the pros is not just about driving. It's about building relationships with top companies like Champion and top people as well. Hey guys, this is Matt Hagen, your 2011 Fuel Funny Car World Champion. Um, been had the pleasure to work with Alex. All of our experiences out here with networking and everything that she's doing, uh, on racetrack, off racetrack, everything uh, is first class. You already pick a winner if you pick her. Hi, I'm Vincent Nobile, driver of the Mountain View Tire Pro Stock Dodge Avenger. I think Alex Roggio is your best pick for the Search for a Champion contest. My name is Paul Lee. I'm uh, president of McLeod Racing and also uh, an HRA Nitro Funny Car driver. You built your life around racing and I'm very proud of you. My dedication to racing includes keeping my mind and body in top condition. I support my marketing partners in every way I can. I enjoy personal appearances. I'm trained in musical theater and sing the national anthem at races. I enjoy modeling, especially with cars, and produce promotional materials like ads, calendars, and videos for my partners. But everything I do is for my racing. Drag racing is the heart and soul of my life. Champion gets this. They understand a racer like me. High quality Champion products keep my race car in winning form. I'm ready to move up to national level NHRA drag racing. And if I'm chosen as the search for a champion winner for 2014, my team and I will be able to build a super class race car and I'll proudly carry the Champion brand to the winner's circle. Man, That's Alex cool. Rosio, you are so That's connected. Good. All these guys <laughs> coming in to say, hey, yeah. I've won everything on the planet, and I endorse this woman. <laughs> yeah. that, I'm, that's very cool. So now we kind of got into a little bit what the point of winning is and what you win. But, yeah, yeah, fill us out a little bit on, uh, you know, what could happen, what um, is going to happen. Sorry. Well, okay, just as a little background. Um, we've already gone through the first initial phase of voting. Um, everyone's videos were online, um, and... You had a month to vote, and they're in the process right now of picking 15 finalists. Um, when they pick those finalists, we'll go through another round of voting, and then they'll choose the, the winner from that. So um, we're waiting to hear if we made it. Um, if we do, 
we're going to be talking about it on the show because I need everyone's help. And everyone that voted for me so far, I really thank you. And if I win. No, when you win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's be here. I like the way you're working that, Bob. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I, right, so I got to be uh, humble here. Um, when and if I win. Uh, <laughs> I, I, hope that. I think I want to go NHRA national racing, which means, you know, a super stock challenger, maybe even a super super gas car. So yeah. we're really, so really I like excited. I like the idea of gas, yeah, super yeah. gas. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right up your alley, right? <laughs> well, yeah, that too. And um, <laughs> what? what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and a little bit later in the show, I think we're going to show a small blooper reel oh. from that oh, video. So that it's, it's, it's just short as funny. Yeah, I, I thought you were one you take. Oh, yeah, Alice. one take. Snake. No, it was the pros. <laughs> pros, yes. Oh. Well, you know, I, uh, long-time viewers of Speed Scene Live will remember. I, this was early last year, I think, yeah. when uh, when you, you had done another video. I think it was one of the ones for the uh, the product line or something. Oh, yeah. it, was, oh, it was fun to watch for those of us who weren't on camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know. what What is it like for you to see a, a blooper reel after you're, you know, it's like, oh, man, people well, are going to see this tonight. I, it's funny because I realize how much I spend laughing. I, 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 after every take, it's like, ha, that was funny. I'm not quite sure why. I, I laugh a lot of times when That's most good. people don't think what's going on is funny, but whatever. Mm -hmm. You'll see. It's, 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 it's a good, it's funny. You'll All right. See. So that, that's coming up later tonight. So, so now, just so everybody knows, the, the main voting where the, the general populace could have voted, that's already closed, right? Um, the first portion of it is closed. Okay. The second portion is coming up February 23rd. Oh. Fifteen finalists will be displayed on the Search for a Champion website, and you can you have to register with Champion. It takes two seconds, and you just go on, put in your password and your log on, and click on your video that you want to vote for, and click vote for me. All right. So how if I'm starting from dead stop, which is where I usually have to start, mm -hmm. it's something to do with my lack of I don't know what. Yes. But um, <laughs> if if I'm gonna go like if I just type in you know Champion.com, can I navigate from there? What what am I gonna find? Um, Champion is such a huge company that you, you, I'm not sure if they have a link to the actual Search for Champion contest on the Champion homepage. That's a good question. I know wonderful. if you go to Search for a Champion and you put that in Google, it'll bring you right there. Or I think the URL is actually Search for a Champion. Yeah, and let's see. I think we've got a, a board right at the end of this video. I wonder if this actually gives us, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I could be totally wrong here. I think that's licensing stuff, isn't it, Rich? Or maybe it's yeah. always a champion. I just yeah, I never heard know. a little bird whisper to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, just checking. All right. Well, uh, so so people will find out when the second yes. tier of voting um, starts. February 19th at 9 a.m., Eastern, I think, they are announcing the 15 finalists. Um, so we are anxiously waiting to so see we'll get, who made it. We'll get it on all our across. Facebook pages. Yes, yes. Indeed. Indeed. it'll be on mine, it'll be on yours, and uh, we'll let everybody know where to go. Uh, Brilliant. Where to vote. Yeah, where to, I'll tell you where <laughs> to go. I'll tell you where to go. I'll even give you directions. <laughs> yes, yeah. Hey, uh, you know what? I know we've got calls tonight. Who's coming yes. up? Uh, Fast Jack is going to be on the show. Yep. Fast Jack Beckman's going to be calling in. Our uh, our friend from Southern California, one of the top drag races, past champion. He's yeah. going to be calling in a little bit later on. All right. Mm -hmm. we got a couple other calls as well. Other yes. luminaries. Uh, Dar Hawthorne has stopped by. You've got important news, Dar. Yes, you do. Well, it, some of you may have noticed that one of our new advertisers is Aeromotive Incorporated, which uh, is, uh, you know, makes some some incredible fuel systems. In fact, I brought a parting gift here. Oh, oh a parting uh, gift. <laughs> For all of those who don't win tonight. This, yeah. is, uh, <laughs> this is the new Nostalgia Nitro Pump and Alcohol Funny Car Pump uh, that uh, will soon be certified for NHRA Heritage Series. Man, why does that oh, thing look so tough and so good? Uh, mainly because it's billet and uh, and it'll be uh, soon certified for 20.9 gallons for the NHRA Heritage Series. Right. It's a real nice piece, uh, just about uh, ready to go to market, and uh, sh I, I believe it should be out in uh, March sometime. But it's uh, it's uh, talking about the the innovation that's come out of Aeromotive uh, and. Uh, I, a couple of weeks ago, had an opportunity to talk to Steve Matuzek, who's the owner and founder mm -hmm. of Aeromotive, and he's making some changes in his racing life, and he is uh, hooking up with uh, Danny Rowe, and here's the, uh, the interview I did with him. Hi, this is Dar Hawthorne for uh, Speed Scene Live, and we're here in the booth for Aeromotive at the SEMA MPMC conferences down in Santa Ana, and I've got Steve Matuzek with me. 
and Steve's got some interesting things going on with his company and going on with his racing life that I think uh, he'd like to share with us. Steve, how are you doing? Good. How are you, Dark? Really good. Um, you're pretty well known for running a twin turbo car, and uh, and have worked out a lot of the issues with with uh, running turbos in Pro Mod, but you're making a change for 2014. Yeah, um, it's interesting you say that because uh, I don't know that we have worked out all the issues. Um, we've struggled with this combination. Uh, it's one-off. Our program typically has been one where we like to collaborate with other manufacturers. Um, so this program was pretty much a one-off. We were partnered up with Roush Yates and Ford. And uh, we, we decided to, to you know go in a different path. Um, and uh, unfortunately, our performance was lacking, um, not for a lack of effort, but um, you know, at this level, trying to compete with, with the cars that are out there and the budgets that are out there, it's very difficult. Um, and if we wanted to, to continue to try to compete, um, we made the decision to try something a little different, learn something new, you know, what is old is new again. And uh, that led us to uh, where we're at today. And where you're at today is you're switching and you're gonna be driving for Danny Rowe. Yeah, this is, uh, this is uh, exciting, uh, scary, interesting, uh, all at the same time. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the challenge. I'm looking forward to not just driving and racing, but learning about a technology that we really haven't been involved with too much, and that's that mechanical fuel injection side of the equation. Um, you know, our company is, is really um, proactive, and, and we always like to take our racing program and use that as, a, as a, our playground to learn about new opportunities, new products, pr solve problems. So I'm anxious to get out there and learn about how these guys run those cars, how they tune them, and see if there's anything that we know that can help those cars um, become even better and more efficient. So now you're just going to show up with your helmet and your driving suit and, and hop in a bad, fast car? That's, that's the plan. Um, you know, and I've never done that before. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm a little nervous about it because I don't know what I'm going to do at the racetrack, but uh, I guess there's some other things I could do. And, and like I said, if there, there's an opportunity to work with somebody like Danny and, and Jimmy Rector, who is uh, unbelievable, and we've been following him for years, um, I'm hoping that some, you know, some of their talent and some of their experience rubs off on us, and we can create some new products that uh, help the whole industry. Yeah, Danny, uh, if, if you don't know Pro Mod Racing, Danny Rowe is... Uh, one of the guys who who's been in there from the beginning, and uh, this is Danny Rowe, another Southern California. Yeah, nice to nice to be here with you, Dar. Um, did you always want to run two cars? Um, yeah, you know, I, well, you know, that, that was always a dream. You know, we we really worked hard at that. Um, when I first started running a car, just having a budget to, to run one car was enough. Uh, but now, with the, as competitive as the industry is, and and the, and the, the quality of cars that 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 we have out at NHRA, um, it's 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 really a necessity for us. We realize that. Um, you know, having that extra data will help us, and, and uh, we really want to be competitive, so it's important. Now, you're going to be running the entire NHRA series this year, but it's being set up a little differently this year? Well, I don't think it's really that much differently than, than it was uh, previously. What's happened now is is that, um, you know, a group of us have worked really, really hard in trying to develop the program uh, to make it a sustainable type of program for NHRA. Um, you know, we've got great cars coming out, and, and we're working hard with our sponsors to continue the program. But it really, the format's basically the same idea. Um, the difference being is, is that, you know, we're, as we're working more as a group to help sustain it. And you're also controlling the, the TV package now. Well, we're, we've got a little bit of influence on that, which is really exciting. You know, I think that's important to us. I think, you know, my sponsors are excited about that idea. Um, I think there's a big difference for Gavi Underground, whether they get to be on TV or not on TV. So that's important as much as it is for Air Motive. So um, we realize that, that uh, we're trying to do that for all the racers. It's not just my sponsors. It's for the series. And we want to continue to grow that. And you're running 10 races this year? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's 10 races, the same venue as uh, last year. The, there's one change in, 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 um, in the schedule where we've moved from uh, two races in Charlotte to uh, moving to the Atlanta to race and only one race in Charlotte this year. So we'll miss the uh, May uh, Charlotte race and that'll be moved to Atlanta. And you're also running two supercharged motors with, with uh, Jimmy Rector? Yeah, we've, we've, we've always had a ton of supercharged motors. That's We, we like that program and that's our combination. Um, you know, we're really excited about Steve coming over and bringing some of the technology that he has. We're going to start running some of his fuel pumps um, and working with him to, to hopefully help our program. 
Um, you know, Steve's a great guy. We love his company. We love the philosophy. He's a family guy. I think he really, really fits well with our program. Now, what are the body styles you're going to be running? We both have 68 Camaros. They're identical cars. They're both Tim McCamus chassis. Um, so they're going to be identical. It's going to be a, a very competitive year. Hopefully, you know, we're going to see Steve only 10 times. I talked about that downstairs earlier. That means that uh, only 10 times and only in the finals. So uh, it's going to be very competitive this year. Great. Well, thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much. Holly calling now. So that was Danny Rowe, and uh, there's a, a picture of Steve Matuzic's uh, new car, which is the uh, sponsored by Agave Underground, which I believe Danny has something to do with it. Uh, but a uh, big change for uh, for Steve Matuzic to uh, switch over to a supercharged motor away from the twin turbos that he ran for so many years that if you made it to the streetcar super nationals or many other mm -hmm. pro mod races, you saw his saw throbbing red uh, Mustang. That's cool. And I didn't realize that was him in there. That's the dude. That's cool. And uh, so he's he's a racer and a, and an engineer and and uh, you know pretty amazing uh, pretty amazing company at Aeromotive. So. Yeah, you know what, Dar? It's funny you say that because we Richard and I for the magazine get to go to MPMC every year just like you do, and Aeromotive is one of our favorite visits that we get to do because they're they're not not only are they really really nice people and they make amazing products but they're so smart every mm -hmm. every one of those guys i go into that meeting and i i'm just like flabbergasted when i come out of it because the the new products they develop are just you know they're so innovative and we're actually working with them hopefully pretty pretty soon to get some one of their systems on our car but yeah. And when really you cool see uh, when you see uh, Lucky on the Manufacturers Midway at some mm -hmm. 26 races this year, you'll also see a pretty good line of aromatic products cool. that are going to be uh, be carried there as well for uh, awesome. for people to run their fingers over. Man, but, uh, hey, run your fingers over that uh, that piece of fuel system you got right there. One <laughs> no. time. I got to see the, the, this. If I hand it to you, you promise piece. to give it back? No, I'll drool all over <laughs> it, and I have to keep trying it. to put it on his head. So right now, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a yeah, I mean it's a beautiful piece, and and I, in fact I'll have one of these up at the march meet if you guys uh yeah. if you stop me and say hey where's that aeromotive pump i will uh, pull it out and, and, and out of your around. pocket uh, <laughs> i'm not gonna tell you where i'm putting it and uh <laughs> and then uh to remind everybody on march 4th uh donny couch and i'll be doing a warm-up show to the uh march meet coming up uh, first weekend in march uh should be a hell of a show they're mm -hmm. they're predicting somewhere between 36 and that many funny cars yep. cool. and uh, at least 9, 10, 11 top fuel dragsters so you will see more top fuelers and more funny cars than you could have seen at the Winter Nationals this last weekend. Wow, yep. so that warm up show will be here. It'll be it's here. Long. In fact, we're going up for testing Thursday uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We come back here Tuesday and then go back up Wednesday morning for yep. the March meet. Nice. Man, hey, Dar, appreciate it, bud. My pleasure. Thanks yeah. a lot. <laughs> it's fine stuff from Aeromotive. It's, you sure I can't just have that one and then, you know, just... You oh, can, I can, but I, mm, okay. I'd, I'd have to kill you. Do you have a, a nostalgic funny car sitting at I can, outside? His I can pretend. Kind of yeah. <laughs> I, you know. And it's definitely nostalgic. It's, you know, it depends on what his, your definition you of You saw that Edsel is, downstairs. Yeah. His Edsel's kind of funny. There's probably still cats in it. <laughs> yes. They might get out if you start it up. If it's, oh, those cats. <laughs> if it's a up to his Wonderful. FE motor in that Edsel, he would probably go, I'm drowning. <laughs> I'm drowning. Said, yeah, it rained the other day, and I found out what those cats have been doing in that car. Oh, <laughs> Oh, wow. There is nothing as fun as that. <laughs> yeah, a, buddy. Darn, good to see you again, man. Well, you got so Jack. You, wait a minute. You got Jack Beckman on. Yeah. And, yeah. And, you should uh, stay for that. I'll stay for that. Okay. Oh, you can, okay. Jack. Nice. Jack would give me crap for the rest of my life if I left. Well, he's going to anyway. Oh, yeah. He, yeah. He, Jack, <laughs> is that Jack? true? Would you give Dar crap? Am I allowed to talk? <laughs> yeah. Dar, don't leave, buddy. Hang tight. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it, Jack. <laughs> Geez, hey, well, a fast Jack Beckman, welcome to Speed Scene Live. And I, I guess Alex knows what I took a break for to hang out with my friends. Alex, you want to tell everybody what I was doing earlier? You were in your attic. Oh. Um, uh, in, in my new garage, oh. nailing a bunch of things, cutting right. a bunch of things, you, you, and recutting and renailing a bunch of things. He's a carpenter. And as soon as I'm done and hang up with you guys, guess where I'm going? Back out to the garage? Right Disneyland? back out there and go so, nail some more stuff. So you keep cutting them until they get long enough. Yeah, well, that, that measure twice, cut once, really makes a lot of sense as you get deep into a construction project. <laughs> oh, man. Sometime you'll learn, I guess. So what, what's, what's going in the garage? Uh, well, that's a good question. It's a little detached one, like a 400-square-foot. It, 
It's a glorified storage shed. It started off as my $3,500 storage shed two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. And ES Pan actually came out here the day before we started running at the Winter Nationals. And um, <laughs> they called it the Garage Mahal. So we'll see if it makes the ESPN <laughs> show. Jeez, man. The garage I guess Mahal. The garages of the rich and famous. That's Sounds like it's big funny. enough to build a funny car in. Yeah. Except I ain't rich and I ain't famous. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, around uh, here you are. Infamous. Star stayed, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh man. Dar, tell him you got nowhere to go. <laughs> uh, the doesn't open till seven. Yeah, to the sea. That's it. That's the real reason. And I got a pocket full of dollar bills. Yeah. <laughs> so Jack, we <laughs> me uh, I'm, back at the ranch. <laughs> okay. Uh, we well, I was at the Winter Nationals this past weekend. Okay, who wasn't? Um, Tell us a little bit about how you felt with the new crew chief, the new team. I mean, basically, everything got mixed up again for you, right? Yeah, but, but I also want to say, nobody should ever say, wow, that poor Jack Beckman. I mean, the, the reality is I drive for Don Schumacher Race, and we're always going to be given the best parts. He's always going to hire qualified people. Uh, Todd Smith, the crew chief that, that helped me win the world championship in 2012, was fired the second to last race of 2013 and that happens a lot it's not a performance thing it, it those sort of things happen a lot there's a lot of turnover in crew chiefs and the crew chief is the one who hires all the crew so what happened in the off season is as soon as the crew guys got an offer two of them went to the matco team one of them went to the army team one of them went to matt hagan's team uh one of them went back to fixing motorcycles because they didn't know who was going to be crew chief and if that person was going to bring their own crew. What happened, bottom line is, Terry Snyder, the assistant crew chief, and Jack Beckman, me, the driver, were the only two that came back. So there's eight fresh faces for us, and nobody has ever worked at DSR before. It was a big change. We did go to West Palm. We got 14 runs in there. We got up to speed as a team. Uh, but the cool thing was, once we qualified Saturday, which is kind of a story in itself, we, we were really dramatic and waited until the very last qualifying session. But once we qualified Saturday, one of our crew members has worked on an independent Nitro Funny Car team, but they never qualified. He said, Jack, I've had every Sunday off. I said, well, we're going to see if we can fix that the rest of the year. <laughs> the, the problem is he thought he was getting time and a half on Sunday. Um, Little did yeah. he know. <laughs> <laughs> you have to clear that with Don first, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's not my job. Nope. That's the crew chief. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And you have a new, um, a little bit of a unique crew member, right, Marla? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's cool. You, you know, drag racing broke the sex barrier long, long ago. Women have been doing this since the 50s and supercharged cars since the 60s mm -hmm. and winning championships since the 70s. So the great thing about drag racing is it really isn't a novelty when a female does something impressive. But there's not a lot of gals swinging wrenches out there. It's hot, it's nasty, they're heavy parts. Your torque and cylinder heads do 150 pounds. And I've known Marla for years. She actually had come through the Frank Hawley School with Frank as her teacher. Oh. And her and I had spoken a bunch about what her aspirations were. And just watching her work her way up through the ranks. You know, she told me when she was on Terry McMillan's crew that her biggest goal was just to get strong enough to torque the cylinder head studs do 160 pounds and and she went to alexis's car she did that cylinder heads on there and now we got her as our clutch assistant so it's it's really cool and the thing is is i'm not a misogynist i didn't say a masseuse okay you got some of you <laughs> no, might have to look that up i do believe that women can do just as well as men at sports that require mental aptitude heck you gals probably have some advantages over us uh, I welcome having Marla there, and I, what I really think it does is it gives our team so much credibility when these young gals come around and say, wow, you told me that people do this, but here I see it on the Valvoline car. There's a lady doing everything that the guys do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a huge deal. I, I'm that's really hey, impressed. Jack, can I, uh, we all see where it says MTS on, on the funny car. Can you tell us a little bit about your sponsor and what Mail Terminal Services is and does? Sure, yeah, and, and let me give you the broader answer on that. You, you know, the good news is that MTS is back for this year, Valvoline is back for this year. The, the bummer is is that between them and we're going to do a one-off race again for Odyssey Batteries and we're going to do a one-off race again for Sandvik Cutting Tools, 
but we're really only funded for 13 races. We're still looking for funding for 11 more. Uh, last year, uh, MTS did the Wounded Warrior Project on the car. We all are pretty familiar with that. Uh, this yeah. year, it's still the Wounded Warrior Project. We're going to raise funds for them, and it's the Veterans Trust. And what happens is, uh, imagine that you're a soldier and you come home, and you're trying to reassimilate into the civilian workplace. Sometimes it's kind of difficult. The Veterans Trust uh, is a charity that has money available to these veterans that want to do something entrepreneurial. P picture that somebody wanted to be a Matco Tools distributor, you know, wanted to work for themselves. This can enable them to get the training, the equipment, and things that they need to do that. Now imagine if you're a soldier that was injured significantly. You were burned, or you were, you're an amputee, or you were paralyzed. Those people have really lost their independence. They are absolutely relying on somebody for their own care. And one of the few things in life that can make them feel whole again is to work for themselves. So this Veterans Trust is a really cool deal, too. And MTS, Mail Terminal Services, really is Roger, Roger and Karen Comstock, my longtime friends, mm -hmm. sportsman racers. Mm -hmm. They've backed me my entire career in the nitro car, and I literally wouldn't have won a single race without them. But, yeah, uh, a great thing. And so you're still, but you're still looking for funding for more races. I think if you ask around, nearly every team <laughs> and most drivers, uh, that's just the reality of today's sport. Is that the driver is expected to be a large part of the marketing program? And I always have been at DSR. Don gives us the best stuff, but that stuff costs a lot of money. Don hires the right people, but those people get salaries. So my job is to go out there and try to find additional funding to shore us up for all 24 races. You know, uh, a couple years ago when you saw Schumacher Electric on the side of our car, what that really meant, Don was funding those races out of pocket. Don doesn't like doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. So what now? We let's let's get off the sponsor thing for a second. Winter nationals were quite uh, exciting. Mm -hmm. Now this time you didn't blow your body off, but your teammate did right in front of you. It's funny. Several people said, "Did did Caps when Caps blew his body off? Did did it hit your car?" I said, "Well, technically speaking." I hit his car. Yeah. <laughs> it did come into my lane, but I, I ran out of steering wheel and I couldn't avoid it. And it's interesting, our car had a problem. There's a transmitter antenna on the car. I don't know if everybody's aware, but a few years ago, NHRA went to these emergency shutoff systems on the cars. 250 feet past the finish line, there's a transmitter. If you don't deploy a chute, it assumes that you're unconscious in the car. It shuts mm -hmm. off the ignition, it shuts off the fuel, and it deploys both parachutes for you. Well, when our antenna broke, that system is a fail-safe that said, hey, something's wrong, and it shut off the ignition in our car, popped the burst panels, deployed the parachutes, which could have been a blessing for us. So I was coasting when I saw that Napa car vaporize, and a big chunk landed in my lane, so I went way over towards the wall, and I was probably down around 80, 90 miles an hour when the rear deck of his car with the spoiler came crashing down, and there was nowhere to go, and it punched a huge hole in the front of our car. Wow. Mm. Yeah, I watched that, and I, I, I thought maybe you had had an issue because your car slowed down quite a bit, but now that you've explained it, now I, I understand. I had an issue followed by a much larger <laughs> issue, and I, that you just reminded me i got to get Ron's insurance information so I can file it. <laughs> yeah. SR-20 went poor, Ron, his insurance is going to go up now. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Okay. He's on the I got Auto Club. Lane, I don't know what he's got. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll be over to inspect the car. Don't worry about it. Oh. No, uh, <laughs> awesome. So what else is new on the horizon for this year with you, Jack? What's going on? New team? Building a garage. Building That's a garage, it. yeah. <laughs> you still, well, uh, now you got some place to put the tractor. Yes, yes, I can put my forklift in there. You know, the, the, the valving deal is kind of cool. We're doing, we're starting the year, I, I mentioned they're on for 10 races. And to most people, this Max Life paint scheme, uh, mostly red and white with some blue, is, is pretty familiar. We changed it a little from last year, but the first five valving races will have that. The next five are going to have a wicked paint scheme. Okay. We're going to be promoting the Sin Power synthetic line, mm -hmm. and this thing's black and gray, and I just think it looks wicked. Uh, it, it, it's cool to get to run multiple paint schemes throughout the year. The, the, the downside of that is it typically means that you're, you're really trying to fill in those races with sponsors that will take one or two or three races, but it's really neat to hop in a fresh-looking hot rod every few races, so definitely we'll get the opportunity to do that. And, and when you say what's new, 
I just want to go back to what's old, and that's winning races. Last year was the first time in my funny car career that we didn't win a national event. We did win the Traxxas shootout, which was way cool, yep. but I want to win a Wally. And it could happen as soon as Phoenix, and it might take us a long time. You know, when we unload in Phoenix, I think all of us will be optimistic that we should be able to qualify that, that Valvoline MTS car in the first run. We felt that way at Pomona, and it took us till the fourth run to get a solid lap in. But every run that Rob Flynn gets, our new crew chief, that's more usable data for him. So I think for us it's important to take those baby steps to get the car down the track. Maybe not swing for the home run. Just try to get it solidly down there, get good start-to-finish line data, let Rob and Terry digest that, tune off of that to try to tickle the car and make it a little faster. Maybe one of the cool things for us is, is being part of four funny cars and seven nitro cars at Schumacher. We can lean on some of the other crew chiefs. And Dickie Venables, Matt Hagen's crew chief, and Todd Okahara, Spencer Massey's crew chief, they were pretty instrumental in coming over to our trailer and trying to help us figure out why our car was sick and what it needed to get to the finish line. Hmm. Yeah. Well, Jack, um some place that I've seen you win a couple rounds and and uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe on the way to your uh, your uh, Super Comp Championship was uh, down at uh, California Dragway at the Auto Club Dragway down mm -hmm. in Fontana, which is going to be opening up uh, again soon, and they have an yeah, open house this cool. Saturday. I'm so glad you brought that up. In fact, this coming Saturday, I think I'm probably going to go out there for the sign prep. hot dogs Ooh. and uh, um, yeah. interesting. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I've still got my the Blackbird, my Super Comp car, mm -hmm. sitting in the backyard collecting dust. Maybe once I get the garage done, it'll get out of the trailer and. Sit well, you can get garage. it reserted this weekend. Yeah, I just, I, I just think that that's so cool to have a local quarter mile drag strip mm -hmm. where people can bring their cars out and run, whether they're 18 second cars or seven second cars. And unfortunately, we haven't had that for quite some time in Southern California. And I think people will be more appreciative than they ever were simply because we lost that for so long. Uh, the other thing that's awesome, you know, the Frank Hawley School ran out of Pomona and Gainesville up till 2008 when we closed shop at Pomona. It just didn't make sense to pay full-time rent on two different racing facilities. Well, when Fontana reopens, in fact, starting in April, the Hawley School's going to come out here on a rotating basis and have some classes, and uh, I'll get to do some teaching again, and I can't wait oh. to do that. I think... I think having a racing school on a professional level like the Frank Hawley's on an ongoing basis in Southern California is something that's been sorely missed for the last six years. I can have a refresher course. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. Does that yeah. mean we'll see you on Saturday out there? Yeah, I, I think it's worth taking the trip out there. I, sure. You know, I still consider myself a sportsman that's just been fortunate <laughs> enough to get to drive a nitro car, but I still love the bracket stuff and I want to be a part of that so I think that's worth making a trip out Saturday. I'll well, cool. see you down awesome. there. Before I work on my garage. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack, we do appreciate you calling in. Thank you very much. Hey, start of a good year, uh, hopefully. And things get better from here. Yes. Yeah, I, I think they will. Well, you know, one more thing I want to talk about. Yes. Alex, your deal. Yes. And, and, and I know you're humble to a fault, but I voted for you. Tell the folks what to do to vote for you. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, we actually, uh, I think, Jack, you're talking about Search for a Champion. Um, what are you, in like 26 different contests right now, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. A um, busy girl. I know. Well, we, we actually just showed um, the actual entry video that we submitted to Champion for the contest. And as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be... Um, we're waiting right now for the first round of voting to be done. Actually, it's already done. We're waiting for the results from the first round of voting. Um, they'll announce the winners on February 19th um, in the morning on their website. And those 15 finalists will get $5,000. From then, they'll have another round of voting. And one... Alex, Alex, quit being modest. <laughs> Tell the folks how to vote for you. I think it's worth it. I th guys, I, everybody that's listening, I think she's got all the right stuff to do this. So tell them how to vote for you. Thank you. Uh, it's alwaysachampion.com. Um, go there and uh, you can search for my name, register on the website, really, really easy. Um, put in your logon information, click on my video, click vote for me. And if, I mean, this is something that is, I, I can't understand why only 392 people submitted videos for this contest. I think this is an excellent 
job of champions. I, I think most people are out working in their garages, Alex. Yeah, well, so I know, together, but, yeah. but I mean, it's like I hear so many people come up to me and ask, how do you get sponsors for your car? And, and it's like, this is like, to me, such a great opportunity to get attention and sponsors. Even if you don't win, you're, you're on display for thousands of people to see. And I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled that they're having this contest. Uh, just the experience has been great, even if I don't you know. Well, you got my vote, and I think everybody listening should go yeah. on and vote for you. We have. Thank you. A lot of us have. Thanks, Jack. We do appreciate you Thanks calling Thanks a lot, in. Jack, and we'll see you on Saturday. Okay, I'm going to go hit my thumb with the hammer a few times. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, my God. You know, it feels so much better once you stop. <laughs> Measure yeah. twice, exactly. cut Take once. Take care, guys. All All right. Right. Jack. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, man. I know Holly, uh, Bob, uh, back yeah. Holly's been waiting on the line yeah, for quite some time. Well, just, uh, give us a line. What do we got coming up? I know Holly's waiting on the line because we got to talk waiting. to her. We have got her dad wrote a series of books for young teens to get into hot rodding, stories about hot rodding, hot rod culture, and so forth. And Holly has just reprinted them. They're available again, and she's got some great posters. And we're going to talk about that uh, right after the break, aren't we? I think that sounds like a great idea. In fact, uh, Holly, uh, Holly, does that work for you? Sure. Okay. Thanks, just Holly. wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hey, it's Speed Scene Live, and we'll be right back. Keep it here. Performance means reliability, longevity, and durability. Being the best is no secret. By utilizing aerospace processes, procedures, technology, in-house engineering, true applications knowledge, and three generations of track experience, it's easy to see why we're the best. We take great pride in the fact that everything we sell, we design and make in the USA. See our entire line of fuel pumps and related products by logging on to aeromotiveinc.com. Aeromotive. We know it. We race it. We live it. 60 years. That's a long time for a company to do any one thing. Doing it right while sticking to your founding values. Now that takes hard work and dedication. For 60 years, Hedman's All-American Workforce has been devoted to manufacturing the very best headers any team of craftsmen can build. That's 60 years of cutting. 60 years of bending. 60 years of welding. More than 2 million in all. And every set made right here at home. At Hedman Headers, we build all American horsepower, then back it up for life. Hedman Headers, made in the USA. Welcome back to more of Speed Scene Live, the number one online drag racing TV show. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m &H Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, and TheFolk.com. Man, that was a good time talking to oh, Fast yeah. Jack and seeing some of those old file footage. That's oh, when yeah, file yeah. footage is oh, in yeah. capital letters on Speed Team Live. <laughs> some of that old video. Uh, Alex is here. Alex the car girl, Rogio. Yes. There's Hot Rod Bob Beck with the Great American Auto Scene. Dar Hawthorne, good to see you for with the too first. Too much show. Yeah, yeah. I, too much show, not enough time. We'll jam it all in somehow. Oh, get that, We're busy. Yep. I'd, I'd say get that shoehorn, but wow, that's archaic. Oh, no. What's a shoehorn? I shoe know what a shoehorn is. Do you? Yeah. I really do. Wow. I've used one. Have so you? there. Mine's electric. <laughs> Mine's electric. <laughs> I'm progressive. Mine's digital. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, well, mine's a 64-bit processor. Oh, boy. You know, pictures, oh, her just, sex. That's, uh, you, never mind. You can tell I get teased about my age a lot. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Well, what's a person to She's do? She's a youngster on the show. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I, are, are people teasing or are they just jealous? Yeah. Is there a difference? Uh, probably not. Yes. I don't know. All right. Well, uh, how All about right. Bob? Looks like it's time for the Great American Auto Scene. Yes. Welcome, everybody. It's Tuesday night, and you've got gas here on Speed Scene Live. With us tonight is Holly Felson. Holly, how are you doing? Sorry to keep you on hold so long but uh, we do appreciate you calling in you have just reprinted your dad's books again yes i i actually had them finished in june and uh we've been getting them out there on on our site on the internet and uh, they're on amazon so we're pretty excited now with the books you've also come up with a series of posters for them and uh, yeah. you and i have spoken a number of times i got to meet your dad a bunch of years ago at the sema show and i got the box set that he had produced back then, you've got a totally new one with new covers, new posters, and everything, but the same good stories. 
And, and yes. that, that's yes. what attracted me to your dad's books. When I first read the, the first one, I was in my teens, and I was like already a car junkie, but this just put it in perspective for me. And your dad was contracted to write these, wasn't he? You know, the very first one he was um, by the Des Moines Safety Council, which later, oh, I'm not sure what it became later, and uh, to try to help teens be better drivers, and it was about uh, getting driver's education into schools. And he actually wrote it just before I was born. So, see, I have this bond to Hot Rod, mm. <laughs> even though I never read it all my life because... I thought he wrote car books because he liked my brother best. <laughs> oh. So I never read the car books. I read other books he wrote, but not the car books. So this has just all been new to me, and I really, I thought I wouldn't care for them, and I just have really enjoyed them. The thing that I think is so interesting is that if you read them in the order that they were written, mm -hmm. it really takes you from 1950 to 1960, and you see how teens and cars, how that changed. Yeah, in that decade. We're showing on screen right now the box set that I've got, which was the the previous print. Then we're showing mm -hmm. some of the early ones and some of the other uh, books that he wrote. And he wrote he, he wrote for decades and wrote a lot of uh, books and, uh, and other things, didn't he? He did. He was pretty prolific. So um, it's kind of neat to, to go back. I've been trying to uh, get copies of all the books that he's written so that I have a full set of everything. And mm -hmm. Some of them are a little expensive. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I, I know I looked at my box set, and uh, it's almost ten times what it cost me in uh, about 1992, 91, 92, when your dad right. and I met at SEMA. I, I, I was so pleased to meet him. He was such a, a, a gentleman. Uh, we spoke for uh, hours on end, and uh, a following year I got Christmas for every year uh, until his passing, he he would send me a Christmas card, which I thought oh, was just no. great. He, he loved people. He really did. And he loved the people who read his books. Yeah. He really appreciated them. And he he saved all his fan letters for years. Mm. That's cute. And I, I, I get a lot of interesting emails and letters from the fans who are now you know retired so they have time to write and <laughs> the stories they tell me are just they're they're just so interesting and and it was so meaningful to so many people so i i'm glad i'm doing this because i sure get a lot of good feedback from people well the stories are are not hard to read they're very uh, entertaining they keep you in involved and for a, a young teen a kid that gets into cars or is getting into cars it gives you insight into other teens and how they are perceiving the cars and the mistakes they make as well as the challenges and the successes yeah, yeah. You, you know bob it's funny that you mentioned this i way back when one of the first books i can ever remember reading as a little kid mm -hmm. was called the red mg and it was just this book about these guys who rescue this junk little red mg sports car from somebody's barn or something or other and you know it's it's a style of writing that i don't think exists anymore mm -hmm. because it was um it was kind of straight to the point it touched it kind of a lot about the facts of life and and hard knocks and and yet uh you know in a lot of cases, I know it sounds like kind of hackneyed and old advice these days, but you know, hard work can really uh, yeah. can really bring forth some great circumstance for you. And a lot of these books were that way; they had very positive mm -hmm. uh, sort of messages through all the cool car stuff going. <laughs> yeah, like a car fairy tale. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and I can remember reading the book, and I don't remember which one it is right now, but it talks about the the hot rod and the the kid that buys the hot rod, and everyone's giving him a hard time because it's an old coupe and it's not very good looking. And he takes it and makes it a show winner. Yes, uh, that's street rod. The street rod, and it, it's pink. Yeah. And everyone gives him a hard time about it, the color, and then he he, he wins the trophy. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it, it just shows that you can go from adversity to the to the top, but it also had a downside to it, and uh, you, you know, but it taught you lessons and it got you involved, and said so other kids could do it as well. I'll tell you something funny. I met somebody just a couple of years ago who, oh gosh, was it 2002, I think, was the 50th anniversary of Street Rod. And so he built a car in the tradition, of, you know, in the way that it's described in the book with 
no chrome and mm -hmm. simple lines. So he built a car because when World of Wheels was coming here, they would give a Henry Gregor Felsen Award. So he built this car just to try to win that award. And he had T-shirts made, and he made a um, had all kinds of information uh, on poster boards about the book and tying it in. And he won the award, and so he said, that, and it was the only year that World of Wheels was ever at the Iowa State Fairgrounds, wow. and that's where uh, Ricky went to win his award. So mm -hmm. he just was really proud of himself that he had done this, and I thought how amazing it was that somebody would do that for the 50th anniversary of a book. And that's amazing, too. Now, Holly, where again can they go to buy these? Um, if they go to henrygregorfelson.com, they can okay. get them from me. Okay. Um, they are available on Amazon. Okay. Um, but I do have a website. Uh, I also call it Felson Inc. with an I-N-K. Yep. Because I've combined our, my dad's writing and my photography so that um, we could have a little site together. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there it is. And so you can get to everything from, from this one. And I, it's kind of a play on words because my dad incorporated his name when I was probably in sixth grade. And he became Henry Gregor Felsen, INC. And, okay. of course, I was an officer in the corporation. And everything. <laughs> so I just thought we always thought of him as Henry Gregor Felsen, Inc. And so I just thought we'd continue Felsen, Inc. Oh, that's great. Holly, thank you very much for calling in. We, we're sorry we kept you on hold for so long. We Not a problem. It, it's a busy night here on Speed Scene. Thank you very much. And go to Filson Inc., guys. Get the books that you read when you were in school. They're back out. And you've got the posters to go along with it now. Thanks a lot for having me. You're welcome. Take care, Holly. Okay. Bye-bye. Man, you know, trip down memory lane there. Yeah, love that's that stuff. That's cool that she's carrying on her dad's legacy like that. that, that's, that's, so that's really it's, cool. It's nice too. You know, a lot of times this uh, older stuff can get tied up in who owns the rights and whatever, and it's yeah. the publisher owns it, and where, whether you can reuse artwork or got to have new stuff. And you know, very cool that in this case she yep. just got it going. We yeah. do now. We got to talking about traveling. We got to travel all the way up to Ventura. Yeah. Whew, and, nice place. Yeah, I, I had that long drive around the corner. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I got to go up the 126 freeway. Yeah. Oh, which, which is a pretty drive. Yes. I like that 126. This. Yes. And we got to find control. out what is so hot about getting blown. <laughs> what did he say? Okay, we're he's talking about a supercharger. Car superchargers, oh, yes, okay. blowers. Uh, Where were you going, Bruce? I have no idea. Let's find out right now. <laughs> I'm Bob Beck. And I'm Alex Roggio. Speed Scene Live with Matt Hatley, Vice President of Marketing for Magnus and Superchargers. Matt, what are we going to see tonight? Well, thanks for coming, guys. Um, we're going to take a tour of the facility. We're going to talk a little bit about late model performance and why superchargers are so popular these days yeah. on late model Camaros, Challengers, and Mustangs. And, oh. of course, and Magnums. Magnums. <laughs> Can't forget the Magnum. So we're here in, uh, at Magnuson, and we're at the beginning of the production process. So this is where all of the raw parts come in, all the unfinished castings, all the parts that we build for our kits. And what I'll show you next is our QC department where we test everything that comes in the door. So Matt, tell us a little bit about what goes on here in quality control. We're at the next step of the process, and this is where we test all the incoming parts. Um, and all of our finished castings. So we check for tolerances, um, we pressure chest uh, intercooler systems. Um, we care a great deal about quality here and we follow OEM quality processes. I mean, obviously a supercharger is, a, is an expensive and complicated piece um, and people want, you know, uh, reliability. We have customers with 100 and some 200,000 miles on their superchargers. Wow. I mean, this is where we really ensure um, that all the tolerances of our incoming parts are, are right. Um, and like I said, we test, so we even spot check bolts that come in the building through here. Okay, so what is this in here? What we're looking at here is our CMM machine. So we have the capability to measure down to the micron tolerances. So this is where we check exact tolerances of uh, finished and unfinished parts. It is 
starts building layers like a printer hmm. and it actually prints this, correct? That's right, yep. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> This is the skunk works of Magnus and Supercharger. We can't go in there. We'd like to, but we don't know what's going on. They have some special vehicles in there that we can't see. And if we did, we'd never be able to leave again. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you know, we had a good time there. We got to see a lot of good things. We saw the manufacturing process. But really they cool. But also have something new coming out. And uh, although Generous Motors may have dropped... <laughs> The the slogan, the heartbeat supercharger is back and alive. Oh, let's take Here's a look. Here's Ken Nutter. Magnuson Superchargers, and we just found out about a brand new product. It was recently released. It's called the Heartbeat, and with us is the technical director of Magnuson and the chief engineer of this product. I'm Ken Nutt. I'm the technical director of Magnuson Products, and this is our new Heartbeat Supercharger. The Heartbeat product was conceived as a Corvette system to fit under the hood. However, once we started designing it, we realised that the same principles could apply to the whole GM range. One of the key features that we aimed for was the optimum performance from the product and no compromise on any of the components. So we started with a completely fresh design criteria. One of the major advantages that we've established in recent years with the supercharger systems is the area before the rotors is typically quite constricted. Any gains we make in this area translates to an immediate gain at the outlet. So with this design, we took the front end and we made it very open, and from this area forward is adaptable to many applications. So we currently have three or four different throttle body adapters, and individuals can change this to suit their own vehicle to the extent that it can be designed to have multiple throttle bodies or very large throttle bodies. Another area of gain in this system was we looked at the input shaft that drives the rotors and we designed a completely new input system that we then tested to GM's own specification that they ran through on the Corvette and we tested it to the durability and performance levels to satisfy ourselves that it would out be outstanding performance and withstand everything we could throw at it. So all of this area here is very open. We also spent a lot of time on the inlet port design to ensure that the rotors got the maximum amount of air. We won't talk a lot about that because that's some pretty special stuff that happens in there. As the air comes through, it then goes into this nice open plenum area that's nice and big in here, which allows the air to disperse and meet the face of the charge air coolers. The charge air coolers are a multi-thin, multi-tube, extruded tube design, and these are the same sorts of tubes and fin design that the Formula One cars use on their thermal control for their transmissions and engines. So it's very, very efficient and very easy flowing. So we don't get much pressure drop across the charge air cooler. The air is then directed down into the ports and out into the cylinder head. These large dividers that run up here ensure there's not much crossfire, which means that emission control is still well defined. And more importantly for a performance razor, we're not getting unburnt fuel where it doesn't need to be. Like all of the Magnuson superchargers, they have the built-in bypass system. This is not boost control, it is purely there as a bypass, which ensures that there is as little parasitic loss as possible. Parasitic loss is the amount of energy that it takes to turn the supercharger that isn't turning into more energy. So it's purely getting rid of that lost energy. Anything that's lost is wasted. We want it to all go into the engine. The charge air coolers are fed through these tubes here. 
there are dual pass systems, so the coolant goes in one way and out the other, and that ensures that no one area in the charge air cooler runs hotter than any other. The nice thing there is all of the cylinders get the same amount of cooling. These are by far the most efficient cooling systems in any superchargers available. The injectors are recessed into ports in the original OEM LS9 position. This ensures that the, the spray from the injector is straight on the valve, gives it the best possible chance of getting the best flame propagation within the cylinder. One of our competitors is not addressing that problem very well and their product does not feed all the cylinders evenly. We're pretty proud of what we've got here. We hope you'll enjoy it. time that we spent at Magnuson oh, learning man. about that supercharger was amazing and oh. Generous Motors is gonna those engines so LS series motors are already putting out some good horsepower this really definitely boosts it and you feel it right from the idle on up this oh, this man. new product is gonna blow away the market I know it it's so innovative I'm not sure if you guys heard but they use um, Formula One technology into the cooling system of that supercharger and I think We've got Matt Haitley on the phone right now. He's the excellent vice president, as he calls it, of marketing for Magnuson. How are you doing, Matt? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs> now, Matt, we don't have too, too much time, but um, we just want to talk to you a little bit about Magnuson. Um, I, you're calling from Texas right now. What are you doing, what are you doing there? I am. I'm, I'm calling from Dallas. I just finished some barbecue, and uh, oh, we had a, a, a great day meeting some of our uh, dealer installers out here, some folks like ADM, um, ABM Performance, and um, 21st Century uh, Muscle Cars. Good, good. Awesome. Now, you, you took us on a tour of the facility up here in Ventura, California. Uh, the heartbeat unit was amazing and is going to be opening up a lot of doors for the, the guys that modern LS series powered vehicle, whether it's a truck, a Corvette, a Camaro, or what have you, and it's really going to jump the horsepower on those. Yeah, thanks. It, it, we're, as you can tell, we're really proud of that unit. It's revolutionary. We're doing a lot of things that um, no one else is doing. It was a clean sheet design. It was, we said, let's, you know, let's dispel all the myths in supercharging. Let's get rid of the heat soak completely. Let's put something that's going to put down some really big horsepower numbers but also very efficient and something that somebody can drive every day. Right. And, Matt, I know um, I, I've heard a little bit of uh, talk that Magnuson is primarily for street, and, and that's true in a sense, but there's also a lot of other applications for Magnuson superchargers. I mean, obviously drag racing. Tell us a little bit about what else there is for Magnuson. Yeah, we're, we're seeing Magnusons on everything from uh, sand rails and and sand drags to uh, you know people using them on road courses, track days, uh, in you know in boats. I, I mean they're so uh, they're so versatile. I and mean, you get that broad range of torque from zero to red line. It's it's useful in so many applications. And a lot of those are in applications where people are you know racing. You know they're at the drag strip one weekend. They're driving it to work all week, and then they're at a road course the next weekend. And yeah. you can outrun any black and white car, light to light, that you want. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Hey. Uh -huh. For instance, <laughs> we had somebody in this week. We had somebody in this week um, testing out a package on a, on a PPV vehicle oh. uh, with the police special package vehicle. So you better watch out. You might see these on police pursuit vehicles. Uh, I can oh, just see boy. CHP now. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are never oh going to want to get out of their cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They it. All right, Matt. We, we don't have too much time. One more question for you. I know I'm I'm certainly excited about the heartbeat unit. Unfortunately, there isn't one for Mopars yet. Do you have any sort of timeline for when that's going to come out? Oh, that's a that's a tough question. Um, we've got a lot on our plate this year. We're just actually on the Mopar side, releasing the Jeep line of superchargers. We've got our hands full with um, the Heartbeat, releasing that across the whole LS line, and then we've got the new um, GM direct injection. GM switching over to direct injection this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would be much later in the year before we tackled something like that. Sorry, Alex. That's okay. At least Wait, don't you, know, you have one hope. of these on your car already? I do. I oh, do. She wants more oh, horsepower. Goodness. But yeah. more I, is better. I love Short my Magnuson. The latest and greatest. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Matt, thanks for calling in. We enjoyed ourselves when we came up to your facility. We hope to see you again. And uh, I, hopefully I won't miss the open house again this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Absolutely. I'll give you lots of warning. And come up anytime. All, All right. right. Thanks, Matt. Take care. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. You, you too. too. Now, we're this Saturday, Fontana. Yeah. Open Fontana. house. Yep. I and can't believe it. It's coming back. It's the, real. The track <laughs> the, with the wall and everything. I come mean, see you the know. new wall. Yes, we got the new wall and such, and uh, it's going to be now. This is pre-wall, but this is your first runs. Yeah, you know it's funny because um, thinking about bringing back Fontana, that was the f very first place I ever drag raced. Uh, I actually went to a test and tune, thinking I was just going to spectate, and all of a sudden. Uh, Richard was like, well, do you want to drive? Uh, okay, uh, now I'm addicted. This this is footage from our very first bracket race at Fontana. Um, as you can see, the car were. is oh, <laughs> so <laughs> fast. Know, that's quite a Good one, though, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the car was w went from being stock, then we put on nitrous. Here you go, I'm purging here. 15-foot oh. line. And you're letting forever. the nitrous out, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, uh, it's just so cool to think that we get to race there again. I'm so excited. The very first competition race is going to be a PSCA race. I'm wearing a PSCA shirt all night. Um, I'm so excited for Bracket One, Street Muscle, all the Heads Up classes. Um, I, I mean, it's going to be a blast. I just now you got to so hear excited. the comments though going through the finish line. Yeah. Oh, I think they're on the next pass. Oh, oh yeah, darn. <laughs> One of the things to keep in mind too is that this uh, we can thank not only Auto Club Speedway but the Auto Club of Southern California for putting up approximately 1.2 million dollars mm -hmm. to build this wall. Tw wow. and it's uh, 1,800 feet long. Wow. It is 24 feet high in spans of 20 feet. They laid all the concrete out there in the parking lot. Uh, Maggio Drilling put in all the uh, all the upright uh, beams there. It's quite a, yes. an engineering feat and. Uh, you know, we'll we'll see how well it works for what kind of cars that we'll be able to run on there for uh, for the 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 near future. Yeah. But uh, it's quite an undertaking, and that uh, there was this commitment by Gillian Zucker at uh, Auto Club Speedway to uh, see this through that we would have a drag strip back in our life. <laughs> All right, well, we're seeing the last run from Alex as we close out the show. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for to Speed Scene Live on this Tuesday night under the lights here high atop the studios in beautiful downtown North Hollywood. <laughs> yes, did I hear Alex as your car is going down the track? He's going, Woo Okay, you don't understand. This was the first pass I ever got into the 11s, and I was absolutely blown away. You'll hear me going, like, wait a minute, what? 1177? No. <laughs> now our elevens are things of the past. Oh yeah, now we're way into the tens. But that was such a big deal then. You had no idea that. That, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is great. Oh man, oh. Fontana, can't wait. That is racing, baby. Hey, great to see you again, Alex, for the first show, uh, your first show of 2014. Thank you. Thank you, Jack Beckman. Thank you, yes. Matt. Thank you, everyone, for being on the show. Holly it's Felsen. been a blast. Thank you for calling. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Holly Felsen. Yeah, Holly Felsen Welch. That's her Welch. Right. Okay, yeah. And uh, check it out at, uh, let's see, felseninc.com. Right. Dar, man, good to see you again. Good to see you, too. Check out Aeromotive. Yeah, Aeromotive. And, Aeromotive, uh, Inc.com. Yeah, you're going to be on the show uh, in early March. March 4th weeks. with Donny Couch, and we'll be doing the Nitro report for the march meet all right man be ready if be you prepared. can't have fun there forget about it that's right fun <laughs> doesn't exist <laughs> all right hey look thanks for joining us for our second episode episode two of 2014 and uh we are so out of time that we uh, we'd start the encore presentation before this one's done if there was any way to do that <laughs> um i'm bruce barker thanks so much for joining us for this edition of speed scene live we'll be back one week from right now right here speedscenelive.com Speed Scene Live TV, the number one online motorsports TV show. Brought to you by Curry Racing Rear Ends, MH Tires, and TheFolk.com.